Father Lord, I pray that you will lift you this morning. And every word that will come out of this place, Lord, please break it into pieces, Lord. And let it fit into every accident here, oh God. It doesn't matter what you're speaking to you. Let Lord God leave this place untouched today. In the name of Jesus, touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this place today that will come back to give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come and put this together for the Lord. Let's have our sister's presence. Let's have our sister's presence. Let's have our sister's presence. I want you to look to your left and right and welcome your neighbor to church. Come on, I know you are in the presence of God. The Bible says in the presence of God, in fact, the Bible says the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. So greet that person as if it's your colleague at work or your friend at work. Say, tell them you are welcome to church. The way you do, don't form. Don't form now. Say something more. Yeah, how was your night? How was your week? How are you doing? What did you eat today? Uh -huh. Ask, uh, yeah, come on. Come on, go ahead. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we form so much in the church. We are not ourselves. Yeah, it's good to laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh for the Lord. Let's laugh. Laugh because God will do something that will make you laugh. I want you to laugh. Laugh for the Lord. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not joking. Laugh. Laugh if you can. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, we are having our conference next week. Let's put hands together for the Lord. And the title of that conference is Jesus, the Restorer of Life. So I just want to do a brief introduction today. And I pray that the Lord will interpret this message into our lives in the way that it will be impactful in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Jesus is the giver and the restorer of life. The book of John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says that the thief has come to do nothing but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come. That's the real word that was there, I am come, because God is always I am. It's always in the present continuous tense. I am come to give you life. And not just ordinary life, to have it in abundance. That's why Jesus has come. Hallelujah. So he came to restore life back to us. The question was raised in Sunday school today. Of course, we were connected with God from the very beginning. But after the fall of man, God cursed man and said, you will die from that particular moment. It wasn't talking about physical death. It was talking about separation. That's what it was talking about. Praise the Lord. But Jesus Christ came back to restore that life back to us. So look to your neighbor and say, you have the life of Christ. You have the life of Christ. Now, I pray that God will give us understanding this morning because as somebody that carries Jesus, you are supposed to minister life. You are supposed to minister life. We've been, I'm, I'm on learning too. Some of the theologies that I learned from the place that I came from, you know, the theology of come and serve God and God will do something for you. No, I'm serving God beyond the things. I'm not the Christians of John chapter 6 that kept on following Jesus because he gave them food to eat. There is something more. I want to carry life. That's why I must pray. When I pray for somebody, they must get healed. When I enter into somebody's problem, that problem must turn around because I carry life. Praise God. Do you carry life? Some people are not sure. Are you born again? Are you born again? So do you carry life? You carry life. You carry life. So we need to have an understanding that we carry life. Why? Because we have Jesus on the inside of us. You don't have to wait for me. If you have a dick, if you cannot pray for your dick to go, Go and take Tylenol. Don't call me. Because you are, you are supposed to be able to minister healing to yourself. Because you carry life. You carry life. The Bible said, this sign shall follow those that believe. Mark 16, 15. There about. It said, in my name. The, John 40, 14 says, ask anything in my name. So why would you, why would you need a pastor to ask for you? 
It's just because you don't know what you carry. You carry life. John chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible says, in him, that's talking about Christ, in him was life, and his life was the light of men. In him was life, and his life was the light of men. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 11. First John chapter 5, verse 11. The Bible says, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. So, if God, if I'm giving you something right now, it means you have that thing with you, right? So, say to yourself, say, I have life. I have life. And because I have it, I can give it also. Now, because it is, life is, you cannot measure life. Praise the Lord. So, it is what you can measure that you begin to think, as I begin to give this out, is going to finish. You can't measure life. The life that you have is, is stay in that scripture, is eternal. It's eternal. So you can give it out. In fact, as you continue to give out this life, it does what? It increases. That's what it does. Stay in that scripture, please. First John chapter 5, verse 11. Hallelujah. This is our testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So imagine we carry Jesus and that life is in Jesus. Hi, I carry something huge. I carry something huge. The next verse. Verse 12. He who has the son has life. This is the difference between me, between us and some other people. He who does not have the son does not have life. So this life that we carry, is not for everybody. So you stop walking like every other person. When we say come to church and we preach, it's not because nobody wants to monitor your life. It's so that you can have an understanding of who you are and how to follow this God. Because you are different entirely. Yeah, I know that flesh can come. That's why we studied this morning in Sunday school. Can come sometimes and we are beginning to think, when is this going to be done? When is this going to happen? And all that. Do you know that sometimes also your, your level of understanding determines your confession? If you confess negative, you see negative. Praise God. Because the Bible made us to understand John chapter 1 verse 3. That God in the beginning was the word from verse 1 and the word was with God. And verse 3 says, nothing was made without what? Without the word. Without the spoken word. So your word forms every parent here even if your child is not behaving well you don't continue to speak to that child in that line you speak in the line that you want that child to become have you not heard people that said yeah you said i'm not i'm a no good person you said there's nothing good that can come out of me and they begin they continue to live in that way you carry life you must minister life you carry life you must minister life hallelujah hallelujah so I, I was not too surprised when we wanted to do the work for life, even though some people could see Jesus on it, because of the, the, the bitterness in their, in their heart. They say it's a, it's a pro-life work. I, I don't understand. A Christian sees that they wrote John chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, and because of the bitterness that they have in their heart, they're saying nonsense. Hallelujah. You carry life. I carry life. Every child of God should have this understanding. Every child of God should have this understanding. It is the life of God. It is the life of God. You should be able to minister life. You should be able to minister life. Hallelujah. So, because you carry Jesus on the inside of you, because you carry Jesus on the inside of you, and based on the things that the Lord has helped me to say, it means that you are actually a source yourself. I hope I'm not breaking too much of somebody's understanding this morning. Praise the Lord. It means that you are what? You are a source yourself. So that's why I'm never scared to pray for somebody. To the glory of God, the only thing that God has not done in my little time in ministry is actually to pray for 
a dead person like this to rise. And I'm praying to God for boldness, myself, to be able to do that. By God's grace, we have prayed, by the grace of God, it, it, with every humility. We've prayed for people in coma and they came back. Praise the Lord. We've prayed for people that they said, these ones, they, they can never have a child. And God gave them a child. We've prayed for somebody that they said, the, the womb is totally blocked. Nothing can be done. And a child came. Because you carry life. I want you to ask the person beside you and say, do you need prayer in any way? Ask, ask the person. It, it does not matter. I know they will not want to say it. Look at your neighbor. She won't say it. He won't say it. But in the next one minute, if you can pray in tongues, hold that your neighbor and minister life to that person. Go ahead and pray for that your neighbor. Go ahead and pray for that your neighbor. If your neighbor is not praying for you, you better look at another neighbor. Pray for that. Minister life. You carry life. Minister life to that your neighbor. Pray for that your neighbor. Be serious with this prayer. Pray for that your neighbor. Minister life to that your neighbor. You, can, you are a carrier of God's life. Hmm. Pray for that your neighbor. Barakatali barabado sheketeli barabadaya. In brazuke tele gedebo shatari gaya badash. In brazuke tele barabado shekete gedebo. Maruze ketele gedebo. In brazuke tele barabadaya. In brazuke tele barabado shikata la gadabash. In brazuke tari gaya gadabash. In bruze ketele gara badash. Shenteli gaya. In brazaka tali gedebo shantali gadabash. In brazuke tali barabado sha. In Brazil, get a leg the boss, and tell the boss. In Brazil, get a leg the boss. In Brazil, Catali Baya. In Brazil, Catali Barabado Sakataba. In Brazil, get a leg the boss. In Brazil, Catali Barabada, send a leg the boss. In Brazil, Catali Baya. In Brazil, Catali Barabo, see Catalagaraba. In Brazil, Catali Barabada. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus was speaking. He said, whoever believes in me, he said, greater work. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater work. So if there, is, there will be anything greater than bringing the dead back to life, we should be able to do it. Hallelujah. We should be able to. He said, Greater works than this, he will do. Somebody was dead for four days. Christ just, just by calling, Lazarus, come on, come out. And Lazarus came forth. So you carry life. So when anything is going on in your life, especially it's not going, I, I love this Sunday school this morning. The challenge we have sometimes is because, because the devil, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The devil is always attacking us. We are, we are in star gates, actually. Because, I, I love the description by the Sunday school teacher this morning. You know the people that already belong to the devil, they have a chain tied around them. So, when they are able to move around within a very small circle, they don't even know. They think they have freedom. They don't have any freedom, actually. You see that by the time they try to go beyond that road that is tying them, they are drawn back again. But you, you are not drawn back to anywhere because you carry God. You carry God. So when it looks as if things are not working the way you think they should work, what do you do? Talk to me. What do you do? You minister life into that situation. You minister life into that situation. That's what you do. That's what you do. I'm not here by the grace of God to come and groom babies. No. I'm here to come and groom mature Christians that are living after the life of Christ. That's why we are here. So that's why I tell people, it's not pride. Like, there are so many churches in Quebec that people can go to. But anybody that is coming here, you must carry and be able to minister the life of Christ. You must be able to minister the life because you carry that life. Like I've said, I'm still unlearning a lot of Jargons that have been taught in the world myself. 
learning. You know, in some countries, because the government refuses to do the right thing, we carry those things to God. No, God has a better business. Somebody is going home. We say, Lord, let there be light when I get home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, it's laughable, but that's the truth. Is that not true? I have prayed that prayer before. I have prayed it before. Lord, as I'm getting up, let there be light. You just need to pay for the light you use. That's the duty of the government. And that's why you now see that some Christians are half cooked, half baked. So when they get to some places where they have everything that they need, they cannot serve God again. Because their understanding of serving God in the first place was material things. So when they now get it because of the wrong teachings that they've been taught, then they don't know they don't need God again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say you carry life. You carry life. The only condition is that Christ must continually live on the inside of you. That's the only condition. That's the only condition. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. It said, the, the life that I live now, I live by the grace I mean, for me to live is Christ. Then the life that I have, me put it up. Hallelujah. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. So it's not the current thing that is controlling every other person that controls you. Who controls you? Christ. Who controls you? The life of God. Because you, you, you know that there are three levels of seeking God. I won't go deep into this. I'll just say it. First, when you come to Christ first, you begin to seek God in man. I'll explain that. For example, if you have not seen the pastor, you cannot eat. You know there are some people like that. Some people even if before they copulate, they will call pastor. Pastor, can I? You know, some people are like, it's the truth. It is the truth. I am a pastor, so I'm telling you things from reality. It's because a lot of people have been caged so much. That some of them cannot even live their lives the way they should. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's the first level. Then the second level is that you begin, you grow to the level that you can be seeking God in yourself because he lives in you. And that is the level where you can hear the Holy Spirit speak to you from within yourself. And you begin to walk in that direction. At that point, you are not a pastor's puppet anymore. Praise God. Then the third level is seeking God in God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The last level is what? Seeking God in God. Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' name. But one thing I want you to know this morning is that you carry life. And that life is the life of God. God dwells on the inside of you. And you have that freedom, total freedom to be able to minister that life. Now, am I saying that don't call pastor for prayer or something? No, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, you can call pastor. We can agree together. Some people that I've prayed with in this church, they can tell. When somebody come, come, comes to me and say, we need to pray, I say, when are you free? Because I'm not a prayer contractor. <laughs> I say, when are you free? They say, I'm free at also time. Okay, let's fast and pray together. I can join you in the fast. We pray together. And there's always been solution. And I'm not trying to impress anybody. So if I don't hear anything, I won't tell you anything. The people that I've prayed with, they know. If I heard something or I see something, I'll tell you. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Praise the Lord. And you also, as a Christian, you don't need to impress anybody. You don't have to. Just live the life of God that you carry. Shall we rise to our feet? Amen. I want you to close your eyes this morning. Can I have the keys, please? Let's close our eyes this morning. And we are going to sing that song again. Daily as I live, awful nights I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. See, what our song is saying is this. 
every represent be able to express it that's what that song is saying everything you do you see i've heard stories of this racism and everything when you carry god racist will all give because they can't they can't refuse god's presence they can't refuse god's god's presence hallelujah powerful nights i breathe let my whole life be expression Sing so we call our father, I am not the we say, I will be Testimonies here in this church of members praying for me throughout the process of their works and things are happening. So it doesn't have to be about the pastor, it's about God and me. It's about God and me. So go to pray, Lord, say, Give me the boldness. If you are born again in truth, give me the boldness to be able to carry you and express you. Try and pray for yourself. Try and pray for yourself. If you are here, you have never surrendered to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not born again. Everything that says this money will not make any meaning to you. Will not make any sense to you. So if you are here like that this morning, invite Jesus to your life. Invite Jesus into your life. Let Jesus know that you are ready for him to receive and accept it totally. Invite Jesus to your life. Let him know that you are ready to receive him totally. Let him know that you are ready to surrender to him fully. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, according to his divine power, he has given us all that pertain to life and godliness. All that pertain to life. It means I'm not supposed to be in, in need of anything. What he wants can be extra sometimes. But I'm not supposed, you're not supposed to be in need of anything. You see, these scriptures, they are so connected. Why? Because you carry, how can God be in need? How? How? It's not possible. So, I want you to pray for yourself this morning. That will help my understanding to know what I carry and what I can do. And that by you, I can meet all my own needs. Go ahead and pray for yourself this morning. Go ahead and pray for yourself that God will give you better understanding. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you, before I pray, if you, if you're here, you've never surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and you want to do so, or you have prayed the prayer that I said you should pray, invite Jesus to your, to your life, please make sure you wait behind after service to see me so I can have a talk with you. Father, we just want to thank you for this morning. We want to give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father, for making us to understand again this morning.
that we have been reconnected to your life and that we carry that life and because we carry it we can minister it lord i pray this morning lord that you give us the boldness and the understanding in the mighty name of jesus that even when we are sick we can minister evening to ourselves in the mighty name of jesus thank you father for our prayers in jesus mighty name we pray praise the lord